Hey guys, and welcome to the Working Money Channel. So this from Matt Hamilton, potentially massive, guys, this is from a couple of days ago. This now breaks Apple's monopoly on payment mechanisms allowed in iOS apps. So listen to this. A court has ruled against Apple to have a proprietary payment ability in their apps. Now app developers will be allowed to take payments by other means. And uh, Matt Hamilton gives us an example via XRP, perhaps. Here is the court uh, ruling on this particular case. The court, having considered the evidence presented at the bench trial in this matter and consistent with its findings of fact and conclusions of law hereby orders as follows number one apple inc and its officers agents servants employees and any person in active concert or participation with them and we'll call them apple are hereby permanently restrained and enjoined from prohibiting developers from including in their app and their metadata buttons external links or other calls to action that direct customers to purchasing mechanisms in addition to in-app purchasing and to communicating with customers through points of contact obtained voluntarily from customers through account registration within the app meaning uh, there was a point where developers could only uh, be paid through that Apple mechanism and now they're opening it up it is unlawful to have a monopoly on that so Matt Hamilton uh, just bringing this to our attention and uh, Nietzsche Bucks down here just asking Matt can you elaborate more in a simple non-technical way especially with an XRP example and Matt Hamilton says for example let's say I make a game the basic game is free but I want to allow players to buy additional levels in the game Cur Currently, the only way allowed is via Apple's in-purchase system, of which Apple takes a sizable cut, which is 30%, I think. So Nietzsche Bucks uh, just responding, so this could open up XRP micropayments and payments to all apps on iOS. Matt Hamilton responding, yes, after this ruling, Apple will no longer be able to stop an app developer instead taking maybe by some other mechanism, i.e. Uh, they allow you to pay via some in XRP or via their own game token currency. So this is a huge development, uh, I think. And, uh, you know, a lot of us haven't heard about this because, uh, you know, it doesn't have to do with cryptocurrency specifically. But since you and I, XRP investors, uh, and XRP is that uh, is that cryptocurrency and that mechanism, Ripple focused on uh, the XRP L for payment this is going to be huge for micropayments because we also know how popular in-phone applications are. So big news there. Wanted to thank Matt Hamilton just uh, for bringing that to our attention. We also have this guy's from Mac Attack XRP. Ripple Vets unveil global micropayments network for Web 3.0. So this has to do with uh, a couple of ex-Ripple employees, a pair of ex-Ripple executives have brought their latest venture out of stealth, unveiling plans for a global micropayment network backed by blockchain technology. So this is called Ping and Pay. The startup plans to create a new category of high frequency, low value payments below $20 per transaction aimed at unlocking new digital retail services, which will be at the center of the next development of the internet, Web 3.0. The venture is the brainchild of Richard Bell, a former Ripple, Visa, and Santander executive, and Jeremy Light, who worked at Ripple and led Accenture's payment consulting business in Europe. The network plans to launch next year, initially in the UK, using a digital coin backed by the pound. Uh, eventually, the network will use stable coins in each country of operation, denominated and anchored in the local currency, 100% backed by liquid fiat assets, uh, with a published proof of reserve to meet regulatory expectations. And so here's a quote from Richard Bell. In a world where micropayments are becoming commonplace, retailers are still finding monetizing digital grazing a challenge, and many potential services they could offer have yet to see the light of day. No one has yet to crack the sub-$20 digital payment market. The major cards networks can process tens of thousands of payments per second, but even so, the cheapest debit card payments cost retailers at least 20 pence per payment, uh, which represents 20% of a one-pound payment. So huge news here, guys. Former Ripple employees looking to uh, unveil this ping and pay uh, solution for micro payments. Interesting to say the least, uh, you know, considering they're also saying that nobody has really cracked micro payments yet. Uh, ironically, I do believe uh, something uh, <clears throat> called Coil exists running on the XRPL. Of course, we know all the possibilities, all the micro payment solutions that can run on the XRPL. Nevertheless, uh, interesting news there. Wanted to thank Mac Attack XRP for posting that. Wanted to also bring you guys this from Michael at Val5 Links. This has to do with algorithms. Uh, this makes Algorand worth taking note of. So this is the title of this article from AMB Crypto. Of course, uh, we have seen Algorand really just kind of hit it out of the park recently. Uh, you know, just kind of out of nowhere, just blasting.
blasting off into its own universe. And uh, right now, as of the time of this recording, Algorand trading at $2.07. Uh, but uh, even if I throw this on the hourly, we can see Algorand has seen uh, significant gains over the last few days, even despite the fact that uh, the rest of the market has seen a crash. We did see this most recent high for Algorand over here on September 9th, uh, clocking in at about $2.50. And uh, just overnight last night, we did see a new Algorand high of about $0.05 cents higher, so $2.55. Uh, but as I mentioned, Algorand right now trading at $2.08, $2.09, give or take. So there is something to take note of here. Uh, this article goes on, talks a little bit about the price movement. A huge reason, though, behind this jump has to do with the partnership of El Salvador's government with CoBanks. This partnership will enable CoBanks to build the government's blockchain infrastructure on the Algorand network. And uh, so for those of you guys who did not know that, uh, I talked about a little bit about El Salvador and how they are loosening up their capital gains restrictions and requirements for people who are uh, making profits off of Bitcoin, considering uh, the country just recently made the cryptocurrency legal tender. I'll link that video up here if you guys didn't catch it, but this was from a couple of days ago. So just in connection with El Salvador, they signed a cooperation agreement with CoBanks to develop the government's blockchain infrastructure on Algorand. So CoiBanks, a leading Latin American asset tokenization and blockchain financial infrastructure company announced today that it has signed a cooperation agreement with the government of El Salvador, a sovereign nation that uses the US dollar and now uses Bitcoin to develop its blockchain technology or rather blockchain infrastructure on top of Algorand's technology. And so Koi Banks chose to leverage Algorand's blockchain uh, in several recent national public and private initiatives across Latin America, including a national blockchain based beer flu certification program at point of sale credit issuance system and various smart contract financing platforms designed for broad participation across a variety of use cases. Algorand's technology provides the performance, scalability, security, and functionality required to implement large scale projects around the world. Uh, Koi Banks is making strides across Latin America to bring more efficient infrastructure and tools to the region's burgeoning digital economy. So that's big. Algorand looking to uh, help build public and private initiatives across Latin America uh, and uh, connecting with Koi Banks specifically in in El Salvador, of course, we know uh, since El Salvador recently uh, rolled out their Bitcoin initiative, there have been some hiccups. The people of El Salvador uh, aren't terribly happy about uh, the cryptocurrency as legal tender, but I think it's teething pains. I think that once, um, once the proper education is in place, we will see more people embrace these cryptocurrencies. In this morning's video, I did talk about Zimbabwe as well. Ukraine also looking to make Bitcoin legal tender. And so I think once the education is in place, we're going to see uh, we're going to see more people adopt it. And uh, of course, if there are more mechanisms in place to help, uh, you know, make this transition more seamless. For example, in El Salvador with the Koi Banks Algorand partnership, uh, that would definitely be beneficial as well. So Algorand definitely in the news and uh, something to be paying attention to. Wanted to thank Michael for pointing that out. Real quick here, guys, uh, just another one with regards to the Ripple SEC lawsuit. Stefan Hubert here saying, you know, the SEC will never hand over the Ethereum documents to Judge Netburn for inspection. Never! With public documents alone, Hinman's testimony, he only represented his personal opinion, can be refuted. He blatantly lied under oath. And so Stefan Hubert here just uh, referencing all of the footnotes here in this paper, this SEC paper, where uh, he's referencing basically the commission has also publicly recognized Ethereum and its native currency, Ether. See the William Hinman Director, Division of Corporate Finance, Digital Asset Transaction, when Howie met Gary, that uh, infamous speech now. And it's uh, it's listed here in all these footnotes here. Number 58 on this page, number 47 on this page, when Gary met Harry, sorry, when Howie met Gary, all listed here, highlighted. Uh, and so uh, I'll link this in the description if you guys are interested. But just another point here, how can this be refuted? Very good observation by Stefan Hubert. And uh, it looks as though he was retweeting out tag XRP's tweet uh, with regards to this same point. Mm, the XRP community seen this document on the SEC Gov website. So just pointing to the fact that uh, this, <laughs> this footnote keeps reappearing time and time again. Uh, so to just finish off uh, Stefan Hubert's uh, tweet here, can you imagine what would come out in the documents that the SEC wants to keep secret at all costs? Those bodies will remain buried in the closet and will never see daylight. This case will end in a settlement soon. I certainly hope so. Wanted to thank uh, Stefan Hubert just for uh, bringing up that point and showing us these documents highlighted over and over with that reference from the Hinman speech.
This also just came out, guys, I think it was yesterday, the SEC has been forced to admit in court that it never gave fair notice prior to the Ripple lawsuit to any market participant. And there were many who sought guidance on XRP if it was indeed a security or not. This coming from XRP Crypto Wolf here on Twitter. Retweeting out another uh, article here from Roslyn Layton. Uh, you guys know she did do an article on the SEC Ripple lawsuit. And uh, now here's another one. It's time to end the SEC's clarity charade on crypto. So just another uh, criticism of the SEC. And uh, a lot of this, we already know, just kind of giving us the historical context. So I will link this in the description for you guys. If you are interested to read the entire thing, I just wanted to go down here right at the end. This last paragraph here, will Congress do its job? The US has enjoyed a fintech boom, but that doesn't mean it will continue. The continued clarity charade is driving fintech innovations and investors abroad. SEC Chairman Gary Gensler will appear on Tuesday for a Senate Banking Committee oversight hearing. Is actual oversight going to happen on the SEC's regulation by enforcement? Will senators challenge him on the clarity charade? Will Congress legislate if Gensler refuses to act? Many angry and frustrated people, American employees, investors, and voters will not wait much longer. The SEC is supposed to provide clear, unambiguous rules through a transparent process. Lack of clarity has created financial crisis before, and it can happen again. So apparently Gary Gensler is to appear uh, for a Senate Banking Committee oversight hearing on Tuesday, which is tomorrow. Again, this article was published just yesterday, so September 12th, 2021. So we got to wait until tomorrow to see what happens, to see if uh, Gary Gensler does provide any more clarity. I highly doubt he will. I mean, unfortunately, considering there still are uh, some tumultuous court cases going on, namely the Ripple and SEC case, and, uh, you know, a probe into Coinbase. Now, Coinbase has been served with papers as well as Uniswap. So uh, it looks as though the SEC taking no prisoners, just going full speed ahead, uh, not giving the clarity that these companies have been asking for and uh, suing these companies every chance they get. We'll see though, guys, I could be wrong. And finally, I saw this from uh, the hodlers of XRP, Digital Asset for Payments Facebook page recently. I wanted to bring it up to you because I was even a little confused at first. Black hole account, this account is permanently black holed. It cannot sign any transactions or issue new tokens. Now, I don't know if any of you guys have gotten this warning. Uh, this is from Philip Bielek here. What does this mean? It's shown on XRP scan for Bitcoin X slash BTCX. I hope we get our airdrops. So if you guys are worried about your airdrops, wondering if you're going to get your airdrops, there are resources for that. I do suggest that you go to hodlers of XRP or holders of XRP. Uh, that is Panos's uh, Facebook page for XRP hodlers. Uh, but the black hole account, does this mean your account is blocked from getting airdrops or what? Well, I did a little more research, so I don't know how many people have encountered this. I've done a little bit more research and just uh, kind of figured out here that this is not anything to worry about, guys. Hugo Vloon down here saying, you know, this means that the owner of the account cannot sign transactions nor issue new tokens. So the owner is not able to dump any available coins after the airdrop on the market, nor they can issue extra coins. Betty Ramon down here saying, when the current supply of tokens is exhausted, uh, they cannot issue any more. There will only be 21 million coins in this particular case. So uh, Philippe Billick down here, just thanking her very much for that. Uh, seems like they have to wait months to get the airdrop. Can't they just use an app? So this is just a question with regards to this. If you guys are uh, following this tweet thread again, this is the holders of XRP, the digital asset for payments private group here. Over 29.4 thousand members here uh, associated with Panos's group. And Jason Son Bateser down here just reiterating, we received already 2,000 tokens of BTCX. Check their Twitter page for updates. So that means a black hole account uh, means the owner of the account cannot sign transactions nor issue new tokens. So the owner is not able to dump any available coins after the airdrop on the market, nor can they issue extra coins. It is, uh, it sounds like a mechanism put in place here to prevent high market volatility. So if you guys have gotten this warning or uh, gotten this message here, if you're checking your account on xrpscan.com, it isn't because you've been banned. It isn't because you did something wrong. Just know that there are certain rules allocated with these airdrops. Just make sure that you find the particular up-to-date information on the airdrop that you are participating in. And also, in case you guys didn't know, uh, Panos does also have uh, this resource here. He posted it just a couple of hours ago. Please, for the upteenth time, stop making repeated posts and asking about the airdrops. He did, uh, in fact, uh, add a spreadsheet here with a whole bunch of detailed information about the airdrops. So if you guys are participating, 
participating in some or all or none of the airdrops. Well, not if you're participating in none, but in some of them, he has given us this resource available for download. So if you're on Facebook, if you guys are Facebook people, I suggest you follow Panos on Holders of XRP, the digital asset for payments group. And I figure since I'm talking about Facebook and uh, Facebook people, I do want to also mention that Working Money Channel does also have a Facebook page. Uh, you can find me at Working Money Channel on Facebook. So uh, just another resource for you guys. I do uh, put all the videos up on the Facebook page as well as my Twitter page at Working Money CH. All right, enough self-promotion. Tell me down in the comments what you guys think. Please subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. Follow me on Facebook. Follow me on Twitter. Hit the thumbs up. Like the video if you like the content I'm providing. I always love hearing your comments. See you in the next one, guys.